No ifs or ands, only buts. It's Slalom on NES Works. We hit two important moments at once for NES with this episode, here on our final game of March 1987. I'm not just making milestones out of moguls, either. The Nintendo-published Slalom is the final game that we'll see to wear the iconic black box branding. Nintendo wouldn't totally abandon this distinctive box art format, but future games to appear in the primal NES packaging style will take a more visually distinct approach to things. And yet even as we bid farewell to one NES icon, we say hello to another. Slalom is the first NES game to be developed by a Western studio. And not just any Western studio, but very specifically Rare Inc. Based in the UK, Rare got its foot in the NES's proverbial door before any other non-Japanese developer by, well, kind of cheating. Their early entree onto the platform gave them a huge advantage over other American and European studios. The company would go on to become the single most prolific developer for the platform outside of the ubiquitous Tose ultimately producing something like four dozen games in total for NES, both as original creations and as works for hire for other publishers. Up until Microsoft bought the company in 2002, Rare was easily a top three development partner for Nintendo, and that history begins here. Even before it hit the NES, Slalom was clearly special. Like a lot of NES games, it debuted as a Versus system title before heading to home consoles, and the Versus Slalom cabinet stood out from its fellows. The idea behind Nintendo's Versus Unisystem was to reduce distribution costs and vendor expenses with a standardized line of cabinets running on conversion-friendly hardware based around the NES board. The Versus Slalom upright was anything but standard though, shipping with a ski-shaped footstand and a pair of controllers designed in the style of ski poles. Not exactly something you could slap a Gradius or Rygar ROM into, but definitely memorable. Rare, too, was a developer out of the ordinary. The company had been newly minted, arising from the ashes of a powerhouse studio called Ultimate Play the Game, which had established the high watermark of software design for the UK's ZX Spectrum platform. By around 1985, Ultimate's bosses realized the Spectrum market had nowhere to go but down, and sold off their properties, using that income to reform as rare. The company's leaders, a pair of brothers named Chris and Tim Stamper, had the remarkable foresight to recognize Nintendo's Famicom as a winner. While Famicom wouldn't reach the UK until late 1986 and would never come close to matching the success there that it saw in Japan and the US, it would still prove to be a goldmine for Rare. Now, going from local UK hero to international besties with Nintendo was a bit of a challenge. Nintendo did not historically offer a warm embrace to unknown developers, and they refused to take Rare's calls until the studio could prove it knew how to produce software for the system. This is a ridiculous chicken and egg situation to be sure, but Rare wouldn't be deterred. Instead, the company hired some knowledgeable 6502 programmers to help them get up to speed, produced a solid prototype NES game, and headed back to Kyoto. Impressed, Nintendo brought them on board as an official developer, and together they shipped Versus Slalom in late 1986, with the NES version arriving in the US a few months later. As with a few other later black box games like Soccer and Mock Rider, different online sources give conflicting dates for Slalom's debut, ranging from March to October of 1987. Whatever the actual ship date, this is definitely the final black box game, and definitely the first NES title developed outside of Japan. And as with pro wrestling, it's a fair bit more sophisticated than the clunky black box games of 1985 and 86. Slalom, as the title suggests, involves players racing downhill along snowy slopes. It's a skiing game, in other words. This is the NES's second racing game to use a behind-the-racer 3D perspective, but unlike Mach Rider, it's a pure racer. There's no combat involved. Slalom feels a lot like another attempt to create an NES equivalent to HAL's F1 race. It uses a similar viewpoint, but it does so in a context that was likely to land better with US audiences than F1 Racing, skiing being more popular here than Formula One. And like F1 Race, it comes to us from a technically proficient third-party developer that would go on to share a close relationship with Nintendo for years to come. Slalom is a better game than either F1 Race or Mock Rider. The downhill tilt on the action does a lot to improve playability. It's a fast-paced game, but in a more forgiving way. The road-based racers we've looked at tended to involve lots of sharp curves at breakneck speeds, providing players with very little reaction time. Slalom involves lots of undulating paths and encourages you to accelerate, 
but you have a lot more warning of upcoming hazards. Unlike a race car or a combat cycle, your little skier can maneuver more sharply on the hills too, so there's a lot less of the awkward scraping the outside edge of a curve that you get in most 8-bit racers. Plus, there's more personality too. Slalom challenges players to conquer three different mountains. Each mountain begins with a basic qualifying course before moving on to more challenging scenarios. Snowy Hill contains the most basic set of courses, with Steep Peak upping the complexity, and the suitably named Mount Nasty posing the greatest challenge. Besides the increasing convolutions of the tracks themselves, each set of courses also contains ever denser hazards. Course obstacles come in four flavors here. Pine trees appear along the courses and will cause you to flip out and likely crash if you hit them. The other static obstacle are snowmen, which appear in arrangements similar to the trees and can likewise cause you to spin out. Then there are reckless children on sleds, or sledges I guess since this is a British game, who swerve back and forth along the tracks. And finally, you have to contend with other skiers, who can cause similar grief to the other obstacles. Really, all the hazards do the same thing, which is to slow you down. Clipping an obstacle will cause your skier to flip through the air and slow down slightly, whereas a full body check will send you sprawling on your extremely well-defined butt and cause you to lose several precious seconds. While Slalom's racing action feels more forgiving than Mock Rider's twisty turny courses, it's still far from easy. The time limits on each course tend to be quite strict, especially on higher levels, and there are no redos. If you fail to make your target time, it's game over, no continues. You really have to avoid all the crap the game throws at you, or else you're back to the qualifying race. No exceptions. It really kind of makes you want to try racing on a mountain where the proprietors actually care about the safety and convenience of their users, but oh well. Your little skier has to deal with a lot of hassles, but to his credit, he gives you a reasonable number of options for playing. Besides the obvious left-right motion of a racing game, you can also press forward to accelerate and back to slow yourself. Unlike most racing games on NES, which use A and B to throttle speed, the up-down control scheme makes a lot of sense here. The D-pad basically controls the pitch and direction of your skier's body, and it's completely intuitive and natural. Meanwhile, the face buttons cause you to jump. Leaping allows you to avoid certain hazards, most notably those dippy little sledders. You're only human though, so you can't clear a tree or another racer. Try jumping those, and you'll only regret it as you go tumbling through the air. Still, the added dimensionality gives Slalom a bit of personality that sets it apart from standard NES racers. Well, except Excitebike, I guess. The slopes are lined with tiny moguls, which unlike the other course clutter, are not a hazard. Hit a mogul head-on and you'll gain a little airtime, which doesn't hurt in the least. And, well, that's about it for Slalom. There's nothing more to it. It's a pretty simple racer, with some basic obstacle dodging built into the design, but it keeps things direct and accessible. It controls well, then it looks great, with colorful visual elements that really pop against the snowy white pathways that go speeding past. And on top of that, it has the most lovingly rendered 8-bit buttocks we'll see on NES until River City Ransom. Man, that bright orange ski suit looks so comfy. It must feel like wearing nothing at all. Nothing at all. Nothing at all. Stupid sexy slalom. Next on NES Works, meet the reason they invented turbo controllers in the first place. 